there, what's up? It's Johnny here and welcome to another episode of the 3C Show. The show that's full of photography love. And uh, I'm at the beautiful, beautiful, I call it Stinky Creek Beach. I really don't know what the name of this beach is, but um, I grew up here, I should know it. It's actually Mangrove, Mungrove, something, Stinky Creek Beach. <laughs> That's what I know it as, man. That's what I grew up calling it. Anyway, today on the show, I want to talk to you guys about composition. Now, we've all heard the rule of thirds and blah, 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 leading lines, blah, 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 blah. We've all heard that. We all know that. Okay, that's great. But how do you really master composition? And I've just got a few things that helped me over the years to get better at composition. And if you see me bend down and slap my leg it's because there's mozzies around okay <laughs> and I'm getting eaten alive and I forgot my bug spray by the way when you're in, in Australia get Bushman's best bug spray ever so yeah that's my hot tip yeah but don't don't get it in your mouth or your eyes because it's terrible it's really is terrible so anyway here we go composition the number one rule in composition is there are no rules <laughs> okay you can break the rules we all know the rule of thirds you know you divide your scene up into thirds this way and thirds that way and things here and things there in your in your frame you know make your frame look a lot fancier and a more appealing to the eye but check out these two images the first one is a reflections image and you can see by that image that I've broken the rule of thirds where's the horizon line it's not on a third it's in the dead center mate you know what I'm saying? So in the dead center is the where the horizon line is. So you can break it. It doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't matter. And look, and it still looks like an amazing image. I, you know, reflections, it's a classic thing where you can put the horizon in the dead center and it still looks okay. So you can see that's one image where I've broken the rules. Next image, you can see this is a portrait orientation, meaning I've got my camera not this way. I've got it this way, you know. I've got it not this way. I've got it this way. Okay, so you can see totally uh, with this image, look at the foreground there. What's, what can you see in the foreground element? What can you see? A big ass rock right in the middle, not on the rule of thirds. So there you go, that's another place where I've broken the rule of thirds. Have a look at this next image. It's a portrait image too. What do you think? What can you see? The sun. It's the same subject to this image. It's a big starburst in the background. And look, it's in the dead center. So I've broken the rule of thirds. So yeah, the rules are there, but they can be broken. So it's good to know the rules and it's good to use the rules. And of course, leading lines, draw your eye through. Like that last image I show you, you could see those sunlight beams, you know, off, off the foam there in the foreground and it's pulling you into the scene. All wonderful things to do. But I tell you what, the first thing you need to go out and do and this is the next tip, okay? So you can break the rules. So the next tip, there's mozzies everywhere, man. Seriously, they're bu <laughs> So the next tip, find a photographer you love. You know, um, find someone you absolutely admire, their work is something you aspire to. Find their 10 best images, okay? Or go to 500 pics, find 10 images you absolutely adore and work out why it is you love those images. Is it that they've used a shallow depth of field, meaning I'm in focus and the rest of the background is out of focus. Is it that they've had a wider lens and they've got really low in their composition and, and the cracks or whatever's in the foreground is just splaying, pulling you through the scene? Is it the time of day they shot this magical golden light like you see, not so golden, looks a bit blown out, but magical light coming in. Is it, is it that? Is it the, the time of day? Is it light that they've used in their composition? That soft area that's helped with the composition to pull your eye through the scene. Break the images down and work out what the thing is that you admire about those images, okay? And that is one killer thing that you can then go and reproduce in your images and, you know, create awesome compositions. So that's, that's another tip. Find a photographer, go to 500 Pics, whatever it is, check out their portfolio, find 10 images you absolutely admire and study them. You know, spend three, four, five minutes on each image and really break them down why that image appeals to you. All right, next tip. Next tip, number three. Next tip. Before you even pull your camera out of your bag, before you decide what lens to use, always define what your subject is going to be. You know, if I know I'm pulling up to a place, and there's a beautiful waterfront, water scene and, and the ocean's moving and I go, well, my subject is going to be the beautiful water moving in the foreground. It's going to be those mountains in the background. Or is it just going to be the mountains in the background? 
You know, is it mean I'm going to put a telephoto lens on and zoom in on those mountains of the background? Is it going to be the person, you know, in the landscape that I'm going to be focusing on? You know, same with portrait or whatever it is. Define what the subject is and that'll help to determine what your composition is and the right tools to use. And you'll be surprised, man. People just rock up, grab their wide angle lens and boom, boom, boom. And they've... Like you look at the image and so what where's the focus of this image what is the subject what what are you trying to convey to me as the viewer is the main subject of this image you know so what's the main thing you want me to look out and pick out of your image so to find your subject that's a good one this is a big one okay particularly when you're shooting with a wide angle lens okay once you define what your subject is the next thing is to figure out what you're going to include and what you're going to exclude out of your frame I know, because for me, I love minimal, abstract landscapes, minimal landscapes. The le less is more. That's what I would say for me when I, when I shoot my landscape. So I absolutely love when there's, you know, a little bit of foreground, something going on, something in the background and not, not lots of clutter. That's me. So deciding what to include in your frame is really, really important. Okay. And there's many things you can do okay, to, to decide this. One thing I always do is I set up my composition. Right, and then I'll do what's called a border patrol. I'll look at this corner and I'll go right around the frame, looking all the way around the edges and checking whether there's something I need to leave in or something I need to take out. And that's important, okay? So, so you just decide, am I including too much in this frame? Do I need to go to a longer lens maybe? Maybe I need to zoom in my wide a little bit. And that's how you decide what you're gonna leave in and what you're gonna leave out because it's up to you to show the viewer what you want them to focus on. What is the subject? Okay, and if something in that frame is taking away from what you see is the subject in your creation, then you need to leave it out. And they say that's it. It's as easy as that. But uh, do that border patrol and that will help with that as well. So one thing people always tend to do is they will connect their camera to their tripod, plant the tripod on the ground, boom, and not move for the whole shoot. And that's it. Wherever their tripod ends up, that's their composition, and that's it. And it's... Yeah, it's just crazy, man. You know, you see beginners do this time and time again. So what I tend to do is I'll leave my tripod on my backpack. I'll choose my subject that I want to shoot. I'll choose the appropriate lens that I need to shoot that subject. And then I'll get my camera and I'll walk around and I'm working the scene, having a look what I think is going to be the best composition. I'm watching the clouds blow in and watching what's going on, watching my sun drop because I'm here a good hour before, you know, sunset or I've scouted the day before if it's sunrise, you know, and I've given myself time to get in, in shot and I'll be getting down low and, and looking. I'll be getting up high and looking and, and moving around, working the scene until I find that perfect composition. And then when I find that composition, I'll find a backup composition because you just never know. Sometimes what will happen, the clouds will be out to the left or they'll be out to the right or something will happen and your scene changes. You just never know. A storm might blow in. So always have a backup composition. That's what I always say. So at least have two compositions. Set up your first one you love the most. It looks like that's the one that's going to fire for that day. And um, yeah, then, then get your tripod out and set up. But do not just get there and attach your camera to your tripod at the height that's nice and easy for you so you don't have to bend your back and that's it because you'll miss that shot and you won't get those good low perspective shots you need with a wide angle lens sometimes all those higher shots that are going to give you more mid ground and you, you ever play around you lift your tripod up and down you see what it does to your image it's amazing it's really amazing how much your composition changes on the height of your tripod so please rock up to the scene choose your subject Choose the right camera and lens that you're going to use and then walk around, work the scene, and you'll be sweet, man. So that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed the show. It was a bit of a longer one than usual and I rambled on a little bit like I do. But man, you know what? It's great to be alive. I'm about to go and fly the Phantom. Get out there, create some awesome images, and I'll see you again next week. This has been Johnny for Three Colours, the show that's full of photography love and the website that's full of photography love, and I'll see you again soon. Peace!